Assalamualaikum. In this video, we'll introduce the multiplexer, also called a MUX. There are many versions of multiplexers with small changes based on the number of inputs, but they all perform the same general function, choosing one data input to pass through as the data output. This is a vital function for being able to control the flow of data through a CPU. This slide shows the simplest possible multiplexer, a 2 to 1 MUX, as both a device symbol and with the internal gates. I like the trapezoid shape of the device symbol because it communicates what is happening. Multiple data lines come in, here named D1 and D0, but that gets narrowed down to just one output line, here named Q. We are not combining or adding those data inputs together. No, one of the lines is chosen and the other is ignored. The decision of which is chosen is made by this S input. S is short for select. If S equals 1, then D1 is selected. If S equals 0, then D0 is selected. How does this device accomplish this? It is a fairly simple internal structure that centers on the fact that if one input to an AND gate is zero, then the output of that AND gate is zero, regardless of what the other inputs are. Notice how the select input feeds into two AND gates, with one line being complemented and the other not. Let's assume that S equals zero. This means that the D1 AND gate is forced to output zero regardless of the actual D1 value. In other words, that data on D1 hits a roadblock. But this S prime signal equals one, which means that D0 does not hit a roadblock. If D0 happens to equal one, then that one works its way all the way to the output. If D0 happens to equal zero, then that zero works its way all the way to the output. In brief, Q equals D0 as long as we select line 0. This logic is summarized nicely in the Boolean equation as well. If S equals 0, then this product term on the right must be 0, regardless of the D1 value. And the equation simplifies to simply Q equals D0. That whole discussion was assuming S equals 0. All of the arguments hold true when s equals 1, but then we would be selecting line 1, and q would equal d1. Note in the slide title the phrase data selector. This is another common term that people use instead of multiplexer. And you can see why now. A multiplexer selects specific data to pass through while cutting off other data. We can extend this idea to a 4 to 1 MUX, which selects one bit out of four possible inputs. To do this, we need more S inputs. A single S input can only decide between two possibilities, but two S inputs can make four unique combinations and so decide between four possibilities. If, for example, we want to select data line number three, we can set the two S inputs to read 1-1, one, one which is the binary code for decimal three. The equation guiding the selection is shown below. It follows the pattern of giving each data input line its own product term, in which it is anded with both S inputs strategically. Continuing the example of selecting D3, both S values are one, which means this product term simply equals D3. Subbing in ones to each of the other product terms yield 0, 0, and 0. So, ultimately, Q just equals D3. We see that strategy here reflected in the gate level circuit. Each product term leads to a 3 input AND gate, with the S inputs complemented appropriately. Note the strategy here of feeding in the data inputs from the left and the select inputs from the top. This has a double benefit. It makes the circuit easier to read, and it also helps us to conceptually distinguish between the two classes of inputs. 
the data inputs provide the actual information, while the select inputs just help that data get to the right place. We can easily see in the circuit the same conclusions drawn from the equation. Almost all of the AND gates are forced output zero. The one specially chosen AND gate could output zero or one, depending on the data in value. Finally, the OR gate funnels that data in value to the output. This is how we can build a 4 to 1 MUX using basic gates. But we can also build the same circuit with devices. The MUX1 symbols represent the same circuit shown at the start of this video. I did make a key notation change. Rather than calling the select input S, I here call it A slash B prime. The reason is that this notation nicely summarizes the operation. With just an S and no other context, it would not be clear whether a 1 would choose data line A or B. But A slash B prime indicates that a choice is being made. The prime next to B indicates that a 0 would select input B. To see how the setup works, let's use an example of selecting input D2. The select bits need to read 1, 0 for that selection. Be careful here. It is easy to fall into the trap of just writing 1, 0 as the values for these inputs. We must carefully match the variable names between the table and the circuit. S1 should equal 1, and S0 should equal 0. Don't always assume that circuits are conveniently organized left to right. Now that we have the input values correct, what effect do they have? This zero value indicates that we select input B in the first MUX, which would hold the value of D2. So D2 makes it to this middle wire. Similarly, in the bottom MUX, the zero selects D0 to pass through. Now we reach the final MUX. Here, the select input is 1, which clearly is choosing A. A holds the value of D2. So it is D2 that makes it to the final output, which is what we expected. This type of structure is a common strategy in logic circuits. It is very similar to a basketball tournament. In this first MUX, two contenders face off, and one wins to move on to the next round. The same thing happens in the bottom MUX. And in the last MUX, the two winners face off to see who is crowned champion. The winner of each match is determined by those S inputs. We have seen examples of a 2 to 1 and a 4 to 1 multiplexer. The pattern shown here can be extended to MUXs of any number of input data bits leading to one output bit. As the number of data inputs increases, the number of selects must also increase. One data select can choose between two data inputs. Two data selects can choose from up to four data inputs. Three data selects can choose from up to eight data inputs. In general, within data select lines, you can have up to two to the n data input lines. A commonly available chip is an eight to one MUX. This is because a standard chip has 14 pins, so all inputs and outputs of an 8 to 1 MUX can be accommodated on a single chip. Keep in mind that you can always have unused data inputs. You would not be forced to use 8 data inputs if, for example, only 6 of them have meaning in your circuit. A couple of quick questions to clarify this. Let's say you are designing a multiplexer that requires choosing from 10 inputs. How many data selects would you need? The answer is four. Three data selects is not enough because that would only be able to express eight unique combinations. Now, if you have 26 data inputs, how many data selects do you need? Here, four is not enough. That can only get you up to 16. Five data selects is the answer. That would allow you to choose from among 32 unique inputs but here a handful would be unused. And now for one final question. It looks complicated, 
but it really illustrates how simple the function of a multiplexer is. Let's say you have a 4 to 1 MUX with all of the inputs shown here. What should the output be? Pause the video until you figure it out. The answer is zero. There's only a one bit output for these types of MUXs. How do we determine that output? Start with the select bits. S1, S0, read 0, 1. This is the binary code for decimal 1, so D1 is selected. Whatever value is held on D1 passes through to the output. In this case, it is a 0. The multiplexers in this video all featured 1-bit outputs. In the next video, we'll see how to choose entire 4-bit numbers. Spoiler alert, it follows a very similar pattern to what we just saw here.